Well, staying with politics, because leader of the Movement for Change and presidential hopeful Alan Tremont is proposing a mandatory one-year internship for senior high school graduates aimed at enhancing their transition to higher education or the job market. According to the one-time trade minister under the Kufaro government, the internship opportunity will afford the graduates the choice to choose their next step to also help build the country's human resource in skills and other labor-intensive areas. He made the comments during a media engagement where his great transformational plan was subjected to the rigors of intense questions by journalists. Emmanuel Samani is my colleague who was there for us. He's joining us in studio for a quick chat. Emmanuel, let's start with that conversation of a mandatory uh, internship for SHS graduates. What did he really mean by that and what's the, what's the end goal for him with regards to that particular proposal? Right, Mariana. So as you know, the founder and leader of the Movement for Change party, Alan Chermantin, uh, engaged the media last night where he outlined uh, some policies that he will bring up should he uh, get the mandate as the uh, president. But uh, talking about this particular one-year internship, he speaks about the fact that a lot of these uh, students after high school education uh, would require a one-year internship, intensive internship, which would uh, in his words, open their minds so, right. so that, because he believes that not every student has to go to university. We can have some artisans come out from there. We can have some entrepreneurs, some right. business people, and so on and so forth. So he talks about uh, a one-year mandatory internship where these students would, you know, make up their minds because not everyone, again, is supposed to go to university. And so, so more like a decision stage, a decision for, them stage whilst they're in for them whilst they prepare to go to university or they are prepared to go to a business track or, or, you know, create a business and so on and so forth. So he talks about uh, a one-year internship where once they, they're able to make their minds, then they can decide to go to the university. If not, then they will be giving the the the... You know, the, the grace or, you know, put up certain policies and, you know, implementations in, in there. So that he can you know, get some businesses going on and so forth. And he makes a very uh, interesting remarks based on the security services. So he says, that, so for example, if one wants to go into any of the security services from senior high school, then they go to university, then they go into the security services, be it the, the Ghana police service, the Ghana yeah, Affairs yeah, service, yeah, and as well as the other, uh, uh, you know, civil sectors where they can. So that's what he's been saying. He's also spoken about, uh, you know, reforming the governance structures where he made some pretty, uh, some remarks that, you know, raised eyebrows talking about the fact that uh, the Council of State in its current state is irrelevant. And so let's take a listen to what he had to say regarding uh, the Council of State. I have some of my uncles and my godfathers in the Council of State. I don't want to use this platform to say that they are irrelevant. But the Council of State, by, by, by the constitutional nature of it right now, is irrelevant. Not, not the people within it. Not the people within it. I'm saying by the constitutional nature of the Council of State right now, it is relevant. And so we have to transition that. All the good people who are currently in, in, in the Council of State, they should all now be re, re channeled, you know, to this new second chamber, which is going to be the real oversight of executive action. So that's Alan Chermont, he's the leader of the movement for change. Imano Samani is still with us. So on the subject of the Council of State, then he mentions um, reforms within the governance structure. What did he say with regards to that briefly? Well, so regarding the reforms, he, he makes mention of certain uh, uh, institutions or ministries within the governance structure which uh, are quote-unquote useless. He also talks about the fact that the president has too much appointing powers and so uh, if he's made president, starting from himself, he would limit the powers of the president to appoint because he makes the arguments that should the president appoint uh, these individuals, then when it comes to issues of, for example, corruption, they will not be able to really prosecute some of these uh, corruption-related cases. Uh, he also makes the point that, for example, the Ministry of Information, uh, if you go to major economies, you do not have a standalone right. ministry that is in charge of information. And so 
in his tenure or should he uh, become president of the land, he will, you know, scrap some of these agencies and, you know, reform them so that, you know, because he also made mentions of the fact that as part of the ISD, which he helped setting up, he, we do not need a standalone Ministry of Information just to disseminate information to us. So, here are some of the highlights of what uh, founder leader of Movement for Change, Alan Kujachamatsin, has been speaking about. The constitutional reform will make sure that we remove that limitation of the president that requires him to appoint half of his cabinet from parliament. Of what purpose is it? That even that particular provision in our laws even reduces the substance of our checks and balances as a country. Because if half of your ministers are in parliament, then can parliament be truly an oversight body? No. It can't. You don't even have the time to do two things, serving as a member of the executive and also doing your work. As All these things, we are aware of them. Why is it that we have allowed it to persist? But obviously, you have to come into power before you have the capacity to undertake the reforms. So what is going to happen? All that this GTP is saying is that, yes, we will abide by the Constitution until it is changed. But it only means that the ministers will be appointed, the half of the ministers will be appointed from those in parliament, from those who are independent candidates. He made a very important inquiry as to whether we are interested in promoting some independent candidates. Yes, we are. 